so there are so this document has some uh, general instructions on business news, uh, how to cover business. So what you will have to do is essentially, uh, you know, if you start preparing yourself, of course, you, you know, you, you have to monitor business news on a daily basis. You have to become like a news junkie. Okay, so here, this is uh, from Reuters. You can actually uh, just monitor business news, and then if you see any, um, if you see any uh, in, uh, particular article that interests you, you can uh, you know read that in detail. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm actually doing that on a regular basis, and I have a few positions myself. Okay, okay, yeah. so. So that's good. So this is this is all, all the stuff, other other stuff, right? Now everything here is actually this Bloomberg Quint has also gone behind a paywall, so you can't really need, uh, you can't really read this, uh, you can't read the articles anymore. They want you to subscribe. So this has gone behind a paywall. Now I think Reuters is the only one which is not on behind a paywall. So here, if you're in India, you set up this news feed wherever you are. You set up a Google news feed, mm -hmm. and then you click on business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, click on business, then uh, you get the business feed. So what you should monitor is you should monitor this every every day. Yes. Monitor all the business news and you know if you want to read something in detail you can read it. Okay, so this is one thing that you should do. Then I've given this uh, link, global business news is for Reuters and then as for watching TV, what I don't know where exactly this will uh, the, the link. Bloomberg broadcast. Yeah, yeah, do, so like, that is actually, so there are two things that you should be doing. Now this, okay, this is actually going from the website. This is not a good link. I'll have to change this link. Let's go through YouTube. So essentially what you have to do is you have to monitor, since you, if you're in India now, you have to monitor two types of news. You monitor local news for which you watch stuff like CNBC See, TV. Yeah, yeah, you watch it maybe at least an hour every day. Okay. I do that, uh, that power breakfast thing from 7. Yeah, whatever it is. Whenever yeah. it is you want you want to watch, okay, watch that. That's uh, some, it'll give you good coverage of India. And, but that's not sufficient. What you need to have is you need to have coverage of the global economy and the global financial markets for which you should go to the uh, Bloomberg broadcast through you. I find that the YouTube broadcast is much more stable. Okay. okay. So if you go to YouTube and you do um, Bloomberg's live, okay, you search for Bloomberg live, okay, you'll get this uh, link which shows live now, okay. Mm -hmm. And so you click this. So this is actually broadcasting. Uh, uh, it's actually 24/7. It's not even 24/5. Okay, it's 24/7. And on the weekends when the markets are closed, they have some very good interviews with people in Silicon Valley and all kinds of CEOs. So it's very educative for anyone who's getting into the industry. So if you follow this, I would recommend the best time to follow this is actually during the uh, the during New York New York hours. Okay. okay which is around 7 p.m. now, 7 yeah, to 8 p.m. after our, uh, 7 to 8 p.m. our time. Okay, so follow this for one hour or so during New York hours. Even if you don't understand anything, it doesn't matter. So all of this material that I'm asking you guys to track, okay, is uh, stuff that you should track on a regular basis. Okay, whether you whether you understand anything or not, it doesn't matter. And the stuff that you don't understand, you should make a note of it. Mm -hmm. Like if they're discussing credit default swaps and you don't understand what credit default swaps are. Then what you do is you make a note saying that, okay, you credit default swaps. Yes. So later on, you'll figure it out somehow. Okay. Later on, maybe after six months, you'll see another kind of program where they're discussing and eventually it becomes clear to you. Okay. But you should keep trying this, what I call defining the frontiers of your ignorance, right? Instead of saying like, oh, I don't know anything. You can now say, okay, what I, one of the things I don't know is credit default swaps. Okay. So this is very important. So it has to be done regularly. I, okay. I wasn't giving uh, much weight to the global news, but now mm. I will. No, you must because it's a global world and uh, the right way to look at Indian business is to look at it as a subset of the global business landscape. Okay. So it's a fast, uh, you know, the global uh, the process of globalization is not really going to change much. Okay. It will continue. So it's very important to look at global markets and, and Indian financial markets especially are quite underdeveloped. So it is very important if you're going to be a finance student, you must understand US financial markets. Those are the most developed financial markets in the world. So that's the right way to study finance. So the other thing that you see in our finance teaching, the way I teach the finance electives is we focus very much on US financial markets. Because if you study based on the Indian financial markets, there's a lot of stuff that you will never study. So it's important to focus on the most developed markets when you're studying some subject conceptually. Okay, because there are many things that are going on in the US which you can learn about, which adds to your conceptual understanding of finance, which is why I think the right way to teach finance is, is with a focus on US financial markets. Okay, so this you do. Okay, another thing that you do, do you this is track those markets as well. Uh, 
you no this oh, i mean you don't have to overload yourself i think if you what what you track is actually the four major markets that uh, that are most important actually if you see the four major markets uh, which are most important to see uh, you can set up a you can take this charting link i uh, trading view okay they have pretty good charge you just have to set up a login okay okay you can you can set up a login here you can track all kinds of stuff so i think that uh, this most major most important uh, markets actually if you see here this uh, yeah asset classes markets and instruments so if you have a, a taxonomy so this is one of the part of the framework uh, it's one of the frameworks that i use which tells you basically just there are four major asset classes okay and uh, in there are these types of instruments okay so one of the things you should do is basically if you want to just track global markets the most important markets the most important markets in currencies i would say if you just want to track two of them cable is not that important actually you track eur usd okay you can see it here i'll upload the video onto the website so you'll be able to see it okay so you just have to type eur usd here you will get this so the euro is most important okay mm -hmm. and the other one that is important is usd jpy okay. i mean i'm just trying to reduce the load because we should not overload people i mean because okay so you have usd jpy okay and okay. you can change the granularity here if you want to make it one day or something you can change the granularity of the chart okay you can here see a dollar yen looking like a uh, ready to make a break for it mm. in fact i might have to buy some here uh, just set it up uh, let's see yeah so here this is something it's looking like it's going most likely to break this thing so what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to set a buy stop order over here okay which will take uh, which will put once it exceeds this price once it makes a new high here mm. i will enter a buy stop order but it's pretty close okay so i'll have to do that so the two major currency markets i mean just to make your if you want you can follow all kinds of stuff you can follow all the major currencies you can follow usd aud usd okay you can follow canadian dollar but the most important i would suggest are uh, euro usd and uh, dollar yen yeah. okay so now we go to the other asset class look at the equity markets okay so you should follow the spy which is the spy actually this has to go into stock okay the spy is actually an etf which follows the s p 500 index oh, okay. okay so this i think it's better to follow through uh, yahoo finance okay because you have the ETF. Uh, this is an etf actually spy is an etf etf you know what etfs yeah. are exchange it's traded funds yeah. so it's an etf uh, etfs are very popular nowadays so this is an etf which uh, follows the s p 500 in index okay? okay so what i really want people to do is to follow the s p 500 now we are looking at equities no i, so, I was asking why do we need to follow the etf instead of the index uh, oh you could follow the index also i just follow the etf because the etf is uh, easier to trade if you trade if you follow the index you will have to trade the index futures yeah okay which is the e mini s p 500 index futures okay you mm -hmm. can do that but the etf is easy to trade so you can try you can doesn't really matter either way you'll end up following the u.s market you can follow the index also directly that for that you have to type uh, gspc no I, I was just asking you mm -hmm. no that's my reason basically okay. because the EC etf is easier to trade okay uh so that's why otherwise nothing it's the same thing whether you follow it's about one tenth of the index the etf if you see ETF is around 287, right? Hmm. And this is 2879. Okay, so okay. it's one tenth of the oh. index. Okay, so it doesn't matter. The chart will look the same. If I remove the scale, you won't be able to tell the difference. The chart will look the same. Okay. So you can follow the S&P 500 index also. It's GSPC. Mainly, what you have to follow is the index, and this is just a proxy for that. Okay. Hmm. So you follow a major equity index, which is the S&P 500, and so what you should follow is this, and then you follow your Indian index which nifty. is the nifty 50 okay the nifty 50 is good enough okay for india so that's uh, these are that takes care of equities okay now we look at bonds for bonds what you should follow is uh, there is this thing called tnx actually you can follow yeah tnx is good enough i think tnx will fall under which i think it falls on the index so really, yeah uh, don't know much about bonds so should i start with a book or something for bonds Oh, you can start with a book for bonds. Um, there's a the best book on bonds you can read is actually a book called. It's very expensive actually. Uh, it's called uh, Inside the Inside the Yield Book. It's by Homer and Leibovitz. Uh, it's it's a bit expensive, I think. Uh, maybe it's about five six thousand rupees. But it's a very good book. It's a, it's a book on uh, in, uh, it's called Inside the Yield Book. 
but there are other things you can do is you can look at the US bond market association okay um, I can just keep tracking it and like you said I could note down the things I don't understand yeah 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 you can do that yeah okay so then I'll show you another site also which is uh, we can put the site over here uh, in this uh, general instructions some of the good websites so we can put them down below okay there is a website here called uh, there's a website called this matter this is a good website actually not very well organized I would say but it's actually good stuff okay so this is actually here you can learn I mean none of the stuff here is wrong okay okay so all the stuff is accurate this is one of the problems on the web okay because there's a lot of stuff which is all kinds of garbage you know, it doesn't give you the right information so this matter I'm putting this here and then I'll email you this website I'll email you this file this document Thank you, so you'll have all the links okay so this one is also a very good website the Fred website here you can get some uh, charts this is st. Louis uh, Federal Reserve Bank so all these links are already there okay you can get this um, link there here you can I use a lot of the Fred charts okay so if you take uh, so another way you can tra track this uh, you another way you can track the, the debt markets is through this okay so now equities is over currencies is over now we're talking about debt so for debt you should again track uh, this is the most important uh, debt, debt market in the world the 10-year US uh, Treasury okay because everything all global mar capital markets are uh, you know being priced across off this it could be any majority but the 10 year is the most active okay, okay. so this is the the uh, st. Louis Federal Reserve Bank okay they have a very good website there's a lot of data on this website Okay, very good quality data so here you can track and see this is showing you what this show is showing you is essentially is the uh, interest rate on 10-year US Treasuries like right now it's 252 which means two and a half percent which means the US government is borrowing for 10 years at a rate of 2.5 okay and then you can use other sites where uh, I think this if you see a site like trading economics okay we'll try to uh, yeah, if you take tra trading economics, there are many sites which give you the Indian bond deal. But here you can see. So since you're in India, you should also track the. Uh, while we are in this uh, debt uh, category, you have to find out where India is here. Indicators, countries. Um, Europe, India is part of the G20. So here now here you should track the Indian government bond yield, the ten-year government bond yield. So if you track this. So I'll put this uh, link also here. Okay. So if you track this, I'll make it make this a little bigger. All right. Okay. So this link is also here. So you don't have to note down any of these links. And anyway, you'll see this in the video. So you should track the government bond yield, and just see. Basically, for these kinds of these things which I'm telling you to do, the the charts. Okay. This is one of the most important uh, types of skills you can develop is look just develop a feel for how these markets are moving just which means you have to keep on eyeballing the charts look at the charts every day if not possible every day once a week or something whenever you get the time keep on looking at the charts and keep on trying to form a view on the market which way do you think it's going to go mm -hmm. eventually because in every role that you have in finance you'll have to take a view on the market mm -hmm. okay every kind of finance role is which whatever role an MBA does okay uh, every role will involve uh, taking a view on the market so you have to get uh, you have to develop the skill and this skill is not so easy to develop in the sense that it's not something like coding where you learn some technical things and once you have learned the syntax once you have learned the syntax there's nothing more to learn as this for the syntax per se okay you know what the syntax is okay but this is not like that this is something where you never really uh, learn it completely mm. okay. Okay. it's very it's very nebulous so it's hard to get a grip on it so you have to keep on developing okay so this is showing you that this is the same thing on the TNX which is a CBOE index same thing US 10 year Treasury note you'll see here it is 25.12 because this is again uh, you know multiplied by 10 okay so 2.51 and that is 2.52 it's the same thing okay so that takes care of debt if you look at US Treasuries and you look at Indian government bonds 
that takes care of debt. Now, only thing left is commodities. Two most important commodities you should track the oil price you can get from the Fred website also, uh, and uh, you can get it from here also. If you go to, so I was the, I just tracking Brent crude. You can track Brent, but the West Texas is a little more speculative. There are two main grades of oil. Okay. Mm. Uh, made them many many grades arab light and all that but the most important traded grades are uh, brent crude north sea uh, mm -hmm. brent and uh, west texas intermediate which is the u.s benchmark it's a north american yeah wti okay. that's the north american benchmark so the wti is more speculative okay, okay so uh, this will come under cfd i think yeah here if you took at uh, in this charting view if you take crude oil you'll get crude oil charts on the fred website also okay okay so these are, I would say, for commodities, the two important markets you should track are, um, where is that chart? Here. The two important markets you should track is, well, one is crude oil, mm. okay, and the other is gold. Gold. Okay. You can track copper also if you want. Gold ETF. But no, 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 not ETF. <laughs> gold again is traded just like currencies. So there is a global OTC market which operates in the same thing this Wellington to New York 24 24 into 5. 5 okay? okay, so the most important gold market in the world is actually in London, which okay. is uh, the London bullion market Okay, so that's an OTC market as opposed to an exchange traded market So there is some exchange traded gold contracts also on the uh, in the US you have uh, Comex gold which is now part of CME group, but uh, the OTC market is more important. So you have two important fixings in gold. There is a morning fix in London and an afternoon fix. The afternoon fix is slightly more important because the New York guys are also in by then. Mm. Uh, but a lot of interns, like all our jewelers who are buying gold, if you talk to any of these Tanishk and all these people, all of these guys will know many of their contracts may be priced off the London morning fix. Okay, so there are two important fixes in gold. So, uh, so two commodities which you want to track. One is crude oil. Okay, so follow what is gold. Crude oil find charts you'll file on Fred as well. Okay, uh, well, of course the Fred site. Okay, but you get lots of long-term data on crude. This is good for intraday charts. This software, this website. This is good for intraday charts. But Fred is good for long-term data. Like intraday positions? No, I don't take intraday positions, but I look at intraday charts. Okay, because I can fine-tune my stops. Okay, you see, because so like really, really actively uh, track, track them. Not, I mean, not that actively, but like for instance, I'll just show you this cable thing that I was showing you, right? Uh, here now, if you if you look at only long term charts, if you look at only daily charts, you can't see that much granularity. Okay, now if I want to go short cable here, I can't see much. Okay, if I want to see all this uh, squiggly stuff here, if I want to zoom into this. Okay, uh, I need to go for some intraday charts, which means I go for, let's say, one hour to start with. So this one hour means this is the granularity of the chart. Now I can see a lot more detail. On the daily chart, there was just looking like a squiggly thing over here. Now I can see the finer price action. So I can set the stop a little better. So when I went short over here, I set the stop over here. Okay. And now that this has dropped a little bit, I can see, I can also look at 15 minute charts. And I've lowered, yeah, okay. So uh, the intraday charts are used for that, essentially. That helps you to te te uh, set tighter stops. Okay. Okay, that's why I use intraday. But I don't actually trade intraday in the sense like, see, if this goes, the only two things can happen here. Either it goes my, in my favor or it goes against me. Hmm. If it goes in my favor, then I will hold it because I see this dropping quite a lot below 124 and all that. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to actually hold it and then I'll try to add more to it. That's called pyramiding. When it goes in my favor, I'll try to add, I'll try to increase my, yeah, it's okay. pyramiding. So okay. this is pyramiding is normally used for profitable positions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it goes in my favor, I will be looking to add, increase my total okay. position okay. size. Okay. So I won't take profits on this. I will actually try to add to the position so that I end up with a bigger position because it's going in my favor. Mm -hmm. But if it goes against me now, I've already lowered the stop to this point. So if it goes against me, then it'll just stop me out over here, which means I'll have almost like a, I'll have only a very small loss on this position. Okay, so that's why intraday charts are important. Okay, so uh, you set up here, oil is, uh, I've already showed you that ticker. Okay, so oil and gold. For gold, you can just, again, once again, you can just type uh, gold. Here you can, uh, yeah, XAU USD. If you type, you'll get gold. Okay, because AU is the symbol for gold. 
if you remember your periodic table okay so that's why silver is traded as xag usd because argentinium ag is a silver code right in the periodic table so this is xau as a gold code okay you can also look at gold as a as a cfd also what cfd cfd is a contract for difference okay if you see cfds they have gold as a cfd CFD is a contract for difference. It's a type of uh, uh, way of settling. It's, it works very much like a futures contract, okay. but it is an OTC instrument. Okay. CFD is an OTC instrument. Okay. So all this sports betting and all, uh, you have a lot of this uh, betting companies in the US, uh, uh, sports betting companies in the UK, which offer CFDs on various Bet markets. 365. Hmm? Bet 365. I don't know. <laughs> That's a specific company you're mentioning. Yes, I don't remember that, but uh, they offer contra uh, CFD contracts on uh, CFDs on uh, major indices and all that. So you can track gold also. So two major commodities, gold and uh, well, oil. If you want to add another commodity, you can track copper also. Copper is very important in global trade. Okay. So you can track copper also if you want to increase your com commodity coverage. So that takes you through all the major asset classes, right? We have covered currencies, commodities, uh, equities, and debt. Okay, okay so that uh, real estate is another major asset class, but it's not really actively traded. There is only one uh, futures contract in the U.S. Case Shiller Home Price Index. There are futures contracts on that. You can trade futures on Boston real estate, uh, Boston home prices, San Francisco home prices. Mm -hmm. So, but they're not very active. I mean, they're not very. They haven't really taken off in a big way. So, yeah. So here you have the other um, links. Essentially, I've given all the links for tracking various markets. Okay. Okay. And you follow news. I think that's more than enough if you do this. Then there's a OANDA uh, research website called Market Pulse if you can follow this. Okay. I think that's more than enough. Okay. Okay. All right.